All right, today I want to talk about Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. I don't know if I got that right. I googled that name because I really didn't want to botch that pronunciation, but I'm like 90% sure I probably did, so I'll apologize in advance. But onto the book. Gideon the Ninth kind of came about for me, and it was kind of a shot in the dark because I caught wind of it when a bunch of agents and authors that I follow on Twitter were talking about it on its release day, just kind of raving about it, promoting the book. And honestly, what really grabbed me was the cover. I had no interest at first, wasn't really worried about it, but it was it seemed to be getting really good reviews, and the cover was just awesome. Uh, like a red-headed girl with a sword and aviators on. I was like, mm, let's see what this is all about. I'm also trying to read a lot more current fiction these days, so I'm kind of always on the lookout for what's being raved about. So this book had space, necromancy, and swords. It sounded fresh to me. So I ordered it and I dove in. So the book follows a girl named Gideon Nav, and she's an orphaned 18-year-old living in a necromantic cult as sort of an indentured servant. She wants desperately to get out of that hellhole. And basically her best shot at ever getting out is to become the cavalier to her childhood nemesis, Harrowhark Nanagissimus. I just ruined that. So basically Harrowhark gets summoned to represent their ninth house in a deadly trial that's supposed to allow you to obtain the coveted status of a Lichter. So Gideon and Harrowhark go to the Canaan House Palace and they're going to compete against all the other heirs of the nine houses along with their cavaliers for puzzles and clues. But as soon as they get there, murder and political intrigue start to muddy the waters really fast to an already daunting challenge. So the gist is that Gideon and her childhood nemesis are going to have to learn to trust each other before they can even begin to trust anyone around them to unlock all these doors that contain the secrets to Lycterhood, which is exactly what Harrowhark wants. So getting into what I thought about this book, the novel has a lot of high points, but it also has a lot of kind of eh points. I really loved the first few chapters. They were entertaining, intriguing, visceral, but the plot heavy info dump kind of starts to roll after a couple chapters, like within the second and third chapters, and things start to get convoluted really fast. They sort of throw the reader into a world of jargon and world building that's never really quite shown well enough to get a true sense of scope and imagery. So like rather than gracefully leading the reader down a orchestrated path touring the world that this author has built, it's all just sort of thrown on you and you're left to make sense of it all. I know some sci-fi fantasy books are successful with that and clearly this book is selling. It gets, it gets pretty good reviews so who am I to judge but it left me feeling kind of shaky on it. But this wasn't that big of a deal, I sort of just pushed through. But to my disappointment, my first bigger problem came when the subsequent chapters after I guess the first three or four didn't really contain the intrigue and luster that the first few did. Essentially, once the meat of the story began, I got kind of bogged down in a slew of characters. Each character has way too many names to keep up with. And though a lot of the characters are brimming with personality, I kind of found it hard to keep track of who was who for the majority of the book. Maybe that's on me, but it was definitely a problem for me. But what kept me reading, however, was the author's voice. More specifically, the voice attributed to Gideon Nav, the main character of the story. She's snarky, she's got attitude, and she's frankly bluntly inappropriate in a way that's kind of unique to the coming-of-age generation that I've been a part of, so I really loved that. I'm not always a fan of, I guess, like more comedic or vulgar voices, but this it really worked for this book. I do enjoy a lot of current authors that are imbuing their stories with the irreverent kind of dark humor that I personally grew up with. This voice kind of provided a lens that I could read through that kept me on the ride, even when the narrative kind of felt like it was wondering. Now, back to the plot. It wasn't until a lot of the major reveals and twists started coming along nearly three-fourths of the way through the book that things started to kind of pick up for me because I was finally finding myself relatively grounded in the world. Um, I was starting to pick up really no who the characters were, what they were doing, and piece the world building together, which goes back to my earlier complaint that I don't think it should have taken me that long. And maybe that's a personal problem for me, but I felt like the book didn't really paint the pictures well enough of the world and the characters. It was a little too convoluted, a little too much all at once. But at this point, the plot twists start coming and Gideon and Harrowhark's hateful yet kind of complex relationship kind of starts to come to a head. And the momentum picks up a lot as the final act starts to play out. But I did feel like it kind of struggles to sustain itself as things run out at full throttle for a bit too long. Basically, all the twists start coming one after the other, and I'm kind of here for most of it, but by the time the final battle ensues, 
all the glory of these sword fighters that we've been teased about for pretty much the whole book being the cavaliers to all the heirs of these houses once we finally get to see them in combat it kind of becomes draining and it's not quite as glorious as i guess we might have expected the final battle sort of loses itself in action prose that is engaging at first but quickly loses focus and it kind of becomes really self-indulgent it's too long and too little of importance actually happens across the final 50 pages that I was honestly just ready for it to be over with. Only the final payoff that comes within the last, say, 20 pages really redeemed it for me. I will say the author put the bow on top for me and got me at least interested in the second installment of the book to see where this goes, because while I did have some complaints, I really did enjoy this book for the most part. And just based on my interest in the story and the characters, I'm willing to check out the next book. The finale to this book, and I'm talking like final 20 pages, it's emotional, gut-wrenching, tragic, and dark, and that was kind of fitting. I feel like I'm being fairly critical, but I wouldn't call the book bad. It didn't really have a lot of bad parts, it just had a lot of eh parts. I enjoyed reading it, but it's sort of held back by a mostly passive protagonist with very little character development and a grandiose-sounding yet incredibly thin world-building. And now, there's nothing wrong with light world-building. But the problem for me was a lack of immersive prose to really cement what we do get to experience in this world. I just feel like too many characters not properly staged within the chapters for a reader to ground themselves in the story and follow it fluidly makes for a reading experience that's far less engaging than it could have been. And the actual setup for this book was a real hook. So it just kind of made for a little bit of a disappointment. The premise really did have potential for greatness, and I actually think that that series could still contain that. I'm willing to read more. Like, I don't think this was a bad book. It's a debut novel. This That kind of prompts me to cut it some slack anyway. And honestly, it's a hell of a first crack. But I feel like it ultimately struggles just a bit under the weight that it's undertaken. But those are my thoughts. I know I dwelled a bit on some of the negative elements of this book, but I actually did enjoy reading it. I do plan to get the sequel when it comes out. And I think it's worth checking out. If you like necromancers, if you like sword fighting, if you like a thriller mystery type of plot and grandiose fantasy world building then this book is definitely worth a shot i think it's only gonna get better with time so those are my thoughts let me know what you guys think in the comments below and thanks for watching